Welcome to the latest episode of the B-Movie Club. I'm your host, Kevin. This week we'll be discussing the 1980 comedy classic, The Blues Brothers, starring John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, Carrie Fisher. It's an all-star cast. For those of you joining us for the first time, each week on the B-Movie Club, I discuss certain guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the past. Don't forget to go to our page on Facebook, Original B-Movie Club, and give us the thumbs up. You can also go to our page on YouTube, at KD9575, and subscribe. It's totally free. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at The B Movie Club. In this movie, the Blues Brothers, Joliet Jake is just getting out of prison. He's picked up by his, by his brother Elwood. They're both kind of low rent, down on their luck, former musicians. Uh, first thing they do is go visit the orphanage where they grew up. And the kindly sister <laughs> tells them that the orphanage is about to be shut down because they owe $5,000 in taxes. Property taxes. Which doesn't make any sense because as a religious thing we're tax exempt I don't know whatever plot hole anyway while they're there they run into Curtis who was the first uh, person to kind of introduce Jake to music as a, as a child he encouraged the, encourages them to go to church so that they can help uh, get their money together to help out the orphanage so while they're there uh, Cleophas James the pastor is doing his thing and the congregation's all into it. Jake has a vision. I gotta get the band back together. If I get the band back together, we can have a gig and we'll make our $5,000 and good times had by all. So he realizes that the band is kind of broken up. They've gone their separate ways. One by one, he starts to track them down. Finds Murph and the Magic Tones playing some kind of low rent lounge, recruits them. Mr. Fabulous, the trumpet player, he is now a maitre d' at a fancy French restaurant. He doesn't want to go, but they embarrass him to the point where he just says, fine, I'll rejoin the band. They get uh, Guitar Murphy and Blue Lou, who are working at a diner. Uh, Guitar Miller, or Murphy is, uh, is, is married now, he's in a relationship. Uh, and his uh, significant other does not want him to leave, so they have this, like a, a musical fight, if you will, like a singing moment. But uh, Guitar and Blue Lou escape out. So now they go to try to find a gig. Unfortunately, they don't have one. They have to do gigs at uh, the Country Bunker, uh, disguised as uh, country musicians. That doesn't go too well. So while he's trying to get the gang together, and while they're trying to track down a gig, they piss off a bunch of state troopers, so now they're chasing them down. Uh, like I said, they irritate the country western community, so now a bunch of angry cowboys are chasing them. They piss off the local neo-Nazis, so now they're trying to get them. Meanwhile, a mystery woman pops up with bazookas and machine guns and tries to gun them down from here and there. It's, it's crazy. I don't want to give it all away. All the twists and turns. There's a lot of levels, if you will. Okay. What can I tell you about this fancy movie? Well, evidently, as you know, Jake and Elwood are played by John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, respectively. They were characters that they created on Saturday Night Live uh, back in the late 70s. It became a huge hit. Uh, so much so that they actually brought in real live musicians, like people who'd worked with such bands as uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, things like that. Uh, they were releasing albums as the Blues Brothers. So much so that it created a bidding war, and the different studios were trying to get them. Uh, eventually they said, okay, you know, we've got your money, do you have a script? Dan Aykroyd did not have a script, so he had to sit down and had never written one before. Wrote a 350-page opus about the Blues Brothers that was more of a, like a, a story or a novel, if you will. They brought in John Landis, who had worked with John Belushi previously on Animal House, to direct. He took this huge tome and whittled it down and actually wrote a real script over the course of several weeks. I had to cut some things, change some things, create what seemed to be an actual narrative. Uh, to cast a lot of famous people, people you'd recognize, Carrie Fisher's in this, John Candy, the list goes on and on. And of course a lot of musicians. Uh, Cab Calloway play, plays Curtis, uh, James Brown plays Cleophas James. Uh, you got Ray Charles, you got Aretha Franklin, 
uh, John Lee Hooker. It's an all-star cast. They are, they're all over the map. And what often happens is they'll meet these guys and they'll immediately cut into song like it's a musical or Grease or something. Um, this caused some problems because a lot of these musicians and singers tend not to sing the song the exact same way more than once. Okay, so the, typically what you do in a movie like this is you play the CD or the tape or whatever of the song and the, the singer would kind of lip sync it. Okay, to try to match it up. But as I said, because they'd always sing it a little differently, for some of the, uh, the performers like James Brown and John Lee Hooker, they just had to film them singing it live otherwise it was impossible to match. Uh, Aretha Franklin had so much difficulty, they had to keep cutting and cutting and cutting until they could find one set, basically, of uh, her being able to keep lip syncing. So, there you go. Good times had by all. Um, having watched this movie, I have to say, it is a musical. If you appreciate this kind of music, this is the, the film for you. However, in my opinion, not that funny. Unless you, if you think car chases are funny, then this is the movie for you as well. Um, not a lot of jokes, per se, you know? Uh, there's no time. I think I, I cracked a smile a couple times, maybe. Now, some people, some of the old-timers who really love the late 70s, uh, Belushi, Aykroyd era, Saturday Night Live, may think, oh, that's blasphemy, you don't know what you're talking about, heresy. Um, my opinion, I, I don't think I laughed once. Doesn't mean it's a bad movie. It's just, if you're going into it thinking you're falling out of your chair, you're going to be disappointed. That's all I'm saying. Now, a lot of uh, cocaine was used in the course of this movie. It was actually written into the budget because they said they're working 24 hours a day. They had a limited amount of time. They felt that allowed them to stay up late to keep working. John Belushi, uh, in particular, felt that it enhanced his performance. And we all know how he felt about cocaine. So, there you go. At one point, John Belushi disappeared. Uh... He, uh, Dan Acker was sort of knocking on doors, came to one door, and they said, oh, you're looking for John Belushi? Yeah. He showed up here a couple hours ago, wanted a glass of milk, wanted us to make him a sandwich, and crashed out on our couch. Uh, it was things like that that uh, caused Dan Aykroyd to declare John Belushi as America's guest. So, there you go. Good times. Um, it was a hit when this movie came out. Um, Dan Aykroyd feels it could have been a much bigger hit, but certain theater chains would not release this movie because they felt there were too many African Americans in it. So D Aykroyd has said, if it wasn't for the racism of America's South, Blues Brothers would have been a much bigger hit. So there you go. Could be. Could be. This movie currently has an 87% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. As I said, it's fine. Uh, I didn't find it that funny. The music performance, if, again, if you're enjoying that kind of music, it's it's uh, the film for you. If you like car chases, it's the movie for you. Just not that funny. That's my only complaint. Not that funny. Moving away from the comedy genre, we're going to be doing more action. We're going to be doing the uh, Natalie Portman, Jean Reno, Luc Besson masterpiece, The Professional, also known as Leon the Professional, currently streaming instantly on Netflix. Send me any favorite scenes, favorite quotes, comments, or questions that I may talk about on the show. Anything about Blues Brothers, I may talk about it on the show. Don't forget to send in movie suggestions. Don't forget to go to our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club. Give us the thumbs up. Go to our page on YouTube and subscribe. It's totally free. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at The B Movie Club. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote. And here it is. We're on a mission from God. Dan Aykroyd in his crazy Chicago accent says that about four times over the course of this movie. So it had to be the totally out of context quote. So good times. Thank you for joining us. Next week, The Professional, streaming instantly on Netflix. Be well. Mm -hmm.